Though it may be true that not every story has a car, I think it is true that every car has a story. I think you'll like today's story, The Tale of Two Chevys. I'm Dan Davis, and this is American Vintage. Hello everybody, welcome to the video magazine. I got a nice surprise for you. There's a car that you don't see very often. You hear about it in Bob Seger songs, but you very seldom see them. 1960 Chevy. And I'm here with Bill Lockwood, and he's got himself a beauty. So, how long have you had this car? Oh wow, golly, that's been 21 years, I think. 20 years. About did, that. did you buy it in this condition? Or did no you have sir, this car? it was found out under an apple tree down in Gorham, New York. Was the apple tree going through it or just under? It was just underneath. It was underneath, but it was getting serious. Okay. <laughs> it was getting serious. So was it like, did you have to do every panel? Did you? No, the uh, quarter, quarter panels on the back end were pretty bad, and it went up into the fins. And uh, unbeknownst to us at the time, the mechanic who was going to do the work says that uh, General Motors is now making these parts for old cars because they realize those dies are just sitting around and not doing anything. They don't make money on them. In fact, uh, my wife and her 60 Chevy Impala, we got pictures of all that in there. That, uh, if you want later, you can take a shot of that. It's all just photographs and on a board. Okay. And, uh, so you were able to get new sheet metal? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So did you have to replace almost every pan? No, or? no, no. It was only mostly over the back wheels. Okay. And so we did from uh, where you see the uh, metal strip is, up on the side, in the fin, there down. And then they just cut out what they didn't need and pasted her in. Yeah. So what's the one for an engine? Originally, this was a six-cylinder. When I got it, it had a, a, a 350 in it that was really beat because this car was used as drag racing at one time. It's got three-speed transmission. It's on the floor, okay. you know, just first, second, and third. Mm -hmm. and, but I, uh, it blew up on I me. Mean, I knew it was going to. I it dropped a ring one day when I was putting it to bed for the winter. And so I immediately took it to a mechanic friend and he slapped a Jasper 350 in it. Okay. And that Jasper 350 has not missed a beat since I had that car and turned the motor in the car. Okay. So do you still have the two-speed train? Oh, yeah. Karen won't let me buy a five. I want one desperately, but she won't <laughs> let me do it. <laughs> but it's okay. It, uh, it does what it wants to do, and it does it well. Okay. All right. Let's, um, let's um, kind of break it down and, and take a look at all the individual parts of it and see what it's got and what you'd like to do if Karen uh, lets you. Yeah, if Karen lets me. Yeah. <laughs> you got that right, Dan. <laughs> okay, so let's start out taking a look underneath the hood of it. Okay, sure. Not a problem. So this is a new Jasper engine, you said? Yeah, Jasper 350, yep. Is it a pretty much stock motor, or did you add a little something to yeah, it? Yeah, slightly, slightly modified, but it's mostly stock. Okay. The air cleaner, now that's that's a doozy. Well, that air cleaner is supposed to be facing the other way to take the, uh, the air in. Yeah. But I found that, uh, you know, NASCAR gets their air for their motors off the windshield down through the vents on the top. So I made my vents a little bit bigger in spots, and I turned it around that way and tried it, and it does work. It, it, it does a lot better, I think. Okay. So that's what I did with it. And then, of course, I had it powder-coated just to make sure it looked like it was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so you run the old Ram-style manifolds? Yep. So no headers, dual exhaust all the way to the back? Yep. Oh, nice radiator shroud. You have metal flick in your radiator shroud. Well, the interesting thing is, the fellow that did the air cleaner for me, he was so impressed with it, he says, can I use that in my advertising? I said, sure, I don't care. And he got such a good kickback on that, he says, Bill, anything else you want done under that hood, I'll do it. So I had him do the shroud. And the interesting thing is, the shroud is really wrong. I should have done it the other way around, where the light blue should have been there, and then the dark blue speckled in, but it's... But it works. You get the sun. You can see it. Yeah, looks good. So, what's the inside like? That, we had that upholstery done at the same time we had the body done shortly afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's uh, getting pretty worn now and faded, but we've had fun. But oh. I'll show it to you if you'd like yeah, to look. Let's have a look. 
There's going to be some stuff on the seat. Well, you might see too. I'll see in the trailer queen. Nope, no trailer queen. So it's like a velour cloth. Oh, this is nice. Obviously custom, yes? Yes, but it's uh, it's painted quite a bit. That used to be a, a dark blue, but now you can see it's kind of faded to a purple. <laughs> but that's what you do when you get old, you kind of fade. <laughs> <laughs> the Wanderer. It's got to be a story there. Yeah, when, uh, when I had my 59 Chevy, it was a black one. And I loved that car, and uh, it's a car that Karen and I had when we got married, and uh, I had the Wanderer painted on that. And uh, I was in Rochester, and I found out there was an artist that was just a good sign painter from where to go, and I drove all the way to Holland, New York, for him to do that. And this old guy come out, and he didn't do this one. I had a local person do this one. But she did it just like he did it, but he did it in about five minutes and only charged me a dollar for both sides of the car. He says, I love doing this on cars. Pretty so, cool. That was cool. But this one here was done by, uh, you know, Jack Tuttle. I know, Dan, I think you know Jack Tuttle. But his wife, Pam's the one that did this on the 60 Chevy. Okay. And also she did something else on the back end that I didn't even know was done until somebody had to point it out to me. Well, then let us have a look. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the back end of the car here, you'll see that there's some black horizontal lines in there. Yes. There's, there's indentations, and that's the way the car was made, of course. Mm -hmm. But my wife, I didn't know she was going to do this for my birthday, but she had Pam paint that all in black. And that was fine. I, I think it's sharp. Okay. But I didn't notice it. They had to point it out to me. I didn't realize it. <laughs> that shows you how... So as many times you I, walked around the back of the car, you didn't notice until they said yeah. something about I'm it. I'm so used to looking out over the nose of the car, not the back of the car. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that was fun, too. Okay, so... 60 Chevy. Why the 60 Chevy? Well, I had so much fun with my 59, mm -hmm. and uh, I've always kind of liked Chevys. Uh, it was uh, something that kind of ran in my mother. With my mother, she always liked to have uh, either a Pontiac or a Cadillac or a Chevy. And in fact, uh, the first uh, car I ever drove legally was her 52 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I wish I had one today, <laughs> but uh, they're pretty rare today. But that's how I ended up like in General Motors mostly, even though I do own Fords and have owned Fords, and a few Chrysler products too. So this is the board that shows the work that got done on it. Yeah, these are different pictures that we had taken at the time of the reconstruction of this car, and my wife mounted it all, and okay. she did a pretty good job, I thought. Well, oh, walk me through a little bit here. Well, anyways, this car was uh, done over in Lyons when it was redone, and, mm -hmm. and these people here in Canandaigua did it, and the interesting thing about the upholstery is the older guy here is the one that started the job. Okay. And the younger guy, he's the one that bought the company. So two different companies worked on the same upholstery. We got the job done. Okay. Oh. Let me zoom in a little closer and just run down some of these pictures. Seeing the stuff that was done. Pretty extensive. How long did the restoration take? Uh, that's a good question. I don't really remember. <laughs> what, uh, what was it, honey? Four or five months? It was through the winter. And it took us about four or five different times. About four months, maybe. Oh, so you went from picking it up in the shape that it was in to driving it? I drove it for a while before the motor went. Mm -hmm. But uh, four or five months it was... Well, no. Well, I, uh, to begin with, the motor that's in this now is not the motor that's in this pictures. Okay. That was the one that blew up on me and I had to replace that. Okay. But it drove. It drove good. In fact, it was a pretty hot mo little motor considering. Not as good as the one I got now though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty neat. So I'll pop this one back in and we'll take a look at the other one. Okay. Karen will bring that out and I'll put this one back to bed. Okay.
Rochester, I worked for Bosch and Lom. They gave me a menial job to work there. But after I got through work every night, I'd go up and down Main Street of Rochester, drag racing my 59 Chevy, the black one that was named the Wanderer like my, what, my blue one is. But uh, one night I was out at the Panorama Plaza, there at the old Arrows restaurant, it's now Bill Gray's, and I was challenged by a person to uh, drag race. And they said, well, I just want to go from the light to the top of the hill going into Brighton, and uh, whoever gets to the top of the hill first wins. And I thought, well, I might be in trouble. This person was driving a nice Ford convertible, 351 Cleveland engine. You know, I knew I was in trouble, but I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll have some fun. And uh, I went to the top of the hill, and I got beat. And I'm not too sure why I thought I should do this, but I thought there's one way to beat this. I ended up marrying her. <laughs> and this is the lady that uh, beat me. And she still beat me, now and again. It was fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It really was. So, tell me about your car. This is my car. I have a 60 Impala, and I love it. And I bought it at the Marion Car Show, and my husband said, what do you want another Chevy for, or another 60 Chevy for? And I said, I just like the design of the 60 Chevys. They're really, really nice in that. And I, I'm the sixth owner of it, and I've had it for, well, about 12 years now. And that, it's a V8, and uh, it's automatic, and it's got a 283 in it. Okay. And later on, you'll see the inside of the motor. And I painted the whole block by hand. Oh. And um, I had fun. And um, I have a baby seat in there. It's a vintage baby seat that it took two years to find. I had people looking in the Carolinas and out as far as California and all the antique dealers. And nobody could find this seat. I had it online. And finally, I found it in East Rochester, believe it or not, only a few miles away. So I got this baby in, in my car seat, the vintage car seat, and her name is Dolly. And we take her for rides every now and then. And, um, no, I really like my 60 Chevy, and a lot of people do. I got more chrome than what Bill's car has, and uh, it's got a uh, horn tooth, I think it's called, the upholstery inside, and uh, it drives really well. Okay, well, let's take a detailed look at it. Okay, let's go. Hey. Oh, wow. You painted this by hand? I painted this by hand. I did. Yes, I did. And a great job. So, it was in rough shape when I got it, but anyhow, you know, it cleans it up. Your shroud doesn't sparkle like those. No, no. My husband ended up with a sparkle one. <laughs> my car is more original. Okay. And, and that. His is more of a street rod. All right. Yep. So, let's mosey on over to the interior. Okay. You'll see the horn tooth, I think it's what it's called. And there's that vintage baby seat. This is how they used to carry kids in the car? Yes. Right now it's illegal, of course. And over there you'll see a Kleenex box that swings out. And I also have a tape deck. And that was during the 60s. The 8 track player? Oh, I do. wow. Yeah. I have three car city seats. Belts in the back. Is this the original interior? No, I don't think it is. It's uh, it's new stock. Because it looks amazing. All new stock. Oh, and, and matching the door panels and everything. Yep. Yep. Now I'll show you the, the truck. If you like to see the truck, mm -hmm. or do you want to see more of the back seat? Yeah, let's pop that open. Okay. Oh. Good leg room. Boy, these cars were made for family travel though back in there the day. They are. Very nice. Now this is what's fun, is the size of the trunk in here. When you used to go to the old drive-in movies, you could put people in the back and sneak into the drive-ins. <laughs> you got three or four of them in here anyway. In there, yes you could. So, With the full-size spare tire. Yep, a lot of luggage. Yep, and a spare tire. Now as you can see down here, um, this is the original paint job. And um, it's got some bubbles, some wear. And along the side of the skirt, by where the skirts will go by the back mm -hmm. wheel, does too. And here, all, this was all just plain aluminum when I bought the car. 
Mm -hmm. And I sat one winter in the barn putting all the black strips in here. But that's the way it's supposed to Must be. Must have taken the whole winter. <laughs> it did. It did. It took, it took quite a while to do that. Yep. So this is my car, and I like her, and she's... And here's some more. Here's some more bubbles, too. And those those are just original bubbles that were on the so car. So this car has never been painted or body worked or anything? It's as just, far as I know, no. 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 And we've taken it to places to have it worked on to see if anybody wants to work on it. And nobody wants to take all that chrome off. Oh, it's a lot of chrome. It's a lot of chrome. We've talked to people and they it'd be very pricey to have it done. Okay. So. And they are only original one time. Yeah, they are. And see, here's, here's some more down here, just a little bit. Down here on each side I have a little bit. And that's, that's it. So. Well, it's a beautiful car. Well, thank you. Sounds good when you start it up. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We have fun. We go to car shows with it, and and uh, usually Bill leads, and I follow in that. So once in a while, I would like to pass them and, you know, and race them, but I just don't dare. <laughs> <laughs> she dares. <laughs> I dare, but not now. Not now. So you guys are, come on back over here, Bill. What are you hiding for? You want me to show you my good side? <laughs> no. You have no good side, Bill. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Stop it, Karen. <laughs> so, gosh, height differential. How, how tall are you, Bill? About 6'4". About 6'4". I'm 5'1". Five one. Five one. <laughs> so how did you guys end up meeting, just, just drag racing? So she'd be in a drag well, race and you marry the woman? That's not how we met. You want me to tell the story or you want to hear it? Well, first of all, i got to say, I was always interested in cars because my old boyfriend had cars. Okay. And so I kind of would hang around with him in the garage and things like that. And I just like always like cars. I really did. So anyhow, he will tell how we met. Well, when I got my job at Bausch & Lomb, I was living out in Brighton at my uncle's place. Okay. And uh, he uh, worked at Bausch & Lomb. He says, well, your hours are the same as mine. He says, you can just ride in the carpool. I go in and I'll just call old man Miller and he'll have room for you in the car. And I said, okay. So that's what we did. Then one day, as Mr. Miller let us out, of the car, he says. By the way, he says Monday my daughter's going to be going down to school in in Rochester College, and uh, she'll be riding with us. Now people aren't going to believe what I'm going to tell them on this, but it's the truth. As I got into that car that next Monday morning, I went to the usual spot in the back seat where I sat, but there was this beautiful young blonde lady sitting there, and I heard a voice in my mind that's plain as day saying, "That's the woman you're supposed to marry," and I did marry her. That isn't what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> and how long ago did you marry her? It'll be 56 years ago this coming December 1st. So that voice wasn't kidding? No, that no, voice wasn't. wasn't kidding. Neither was I. I love this lady. In spite of what she thinks of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him. I love him. Uh, we just have fun. Yep. And the thing is, is when we retired, we thought, what can we do? together because Bill's legs, he had knee replacements done, so we couldn't ski, we couldn't do a lot of other things that were, you know, really athletic type. So we decided that we wanted classic cars so we could meet new friends and have a good time. And that's what we've done. Yep. Well, thanks so much. You're welcome, You're welcome, Dan. Dan. We love you, brother. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story as much as I did, and I hope that story continues for years to come. Stay with us as we'll look for more cars and more stories to bring you in the future. Until then, I'm Dan Davis, and this has been American Vintage.